Ready for an adventure? Today, we're diving headfirst into the Manang district of Nepal. Yeah. It's a hidden paradise nestled high in the Himalayas. You've sent us some incredible excerpts from the Manang and Kailash 13.030401.pdf. Uh -huh. And we're on a mission to uncover the mysteries and cultural treasures of this place and its people, the Nichangpa. What's fascinating is how much as Manang's history comes to us through this captivating blend of oral tradition and the few pieces of tangible evidence we have. It's like piecing together a puzzle with some pieces missing. Let's start with who these Nitangpa people are. Where did they come from? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. The Manang mentions there's no concrete historical documentation, so we rely on the stories passed down through generations. Okay, so let's hear those stories. Oh, yeah. Like even the name Manang itself, how did that come about? Well, according to Ake Shangla, an elder in Manang village, the name originates from a simple observation. Picture this, Tibetan travelers looking down at the village from above. In Tibetan, ma means down and nong means house. They were essentially saying, look, the house is down there. And that, my friend, is how Manang got its name. I love that. It's so simple, yet it paints such a vivid picture. It also hints at the strong Tibetan influence on the region. And speaking of hints, it's fascinating how the Manj language borrows so much from Tibetan. The Manang even mentions that some of their eulogy songs are sung in Tibetan. That's right, and that's a huge clue. These linguistic connections point to a deep-rooted relationship with Tibet, perhaps even suggesting the Naishingpa's ancestral origins. Just imagine, these ancient chants have been passed down for generations, echoing a past they may not even fully remember. It makes you wonder what other secrets are woven into the fabric of their culture. It sends chills down my spine. So we've got this intriguing blend of oral history and cultural practices, but what about physical evidence? The Manang also mentions these incredible monasteries, with three holding particular significance. Tazrab, Patso, and Degkar. The monasteries are where things get really interesting. Take Tasrab Monastery, for example. It's also known as Tari Gompa, and its origins are shrouded in mystery. The Manang describes a flat stone with an inscription detailing its history, but it has vanished. A vanished inscription. Talk about a lost treasure. No wonder there are so many theories about its founding. Was it a disciple of the famous Yogi Milarepa, or Lowo Kenjin Sonam Lundup, or maybe even Orchin Kunga Zangpo? It's a history buff's dream and nightmare all rolled into one. It certainly makes you wonder what really happened. But even with the missing inscription, Tazrav still holds a tangible link to Milarepa. This is where the story of Gampo Dorshe, the hunter, comes into play. Oh, right. The hunter who had that life-changing encounter with Milarepa. The story goes that he was out hunting deer when he came across Milarepa meditating in a cave. The encounter was so profound that Gampo Dorshe vowed to give up hunting, even throwing his bow over the cave where it supposedly remains to this day. And that's not all. He's also said to have surrendered his gun at Tazrab Monastery. There's an old gun there that's believed to be his. And here's where it gets really fascinating. The gun's handle is decorated with a Vajra circle. Now, Vajra is the Tibetan word for Dorshe, which is Gampo Dorshe's name. Wait, seriously? That's more than a coincidence. Do you think he chose a weapon with that symbol on purpose? Or could it be a later addition? That's a great question, and it really highlights how history gets tangled and layered over time. It makes you wonder if there are other hidden clues, other forgotten artifacts that could shed light on Tazrab's true origins. So if Tazrab is this historical puzzle box, what about Pazzo Monastery? That one seems a bit more straightforward, right? Not quite. While it's believed to have been founded by Lowo Kenshin Sonam Lindup, here's the curious thing. It started as a Sakya sect monastery, but is now under the Kagyu and Nyingma schools of Tibetan Buddhism. To give you some context, those are two of the four main schools of Tibetan Buddhism, each with their own unique lineages and practices. So how did it transition from one to the other? That's the real mystery. Another twist. So we've got these monasteries, each with its own enigma, and they're all connected to this larger story of the Naishengpa people. It's like each one holds a piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. What about Dagkar Monastery? What's its claim to fame? Dagkar Monastery is fascinating because of its unique architecture. It's built on top of a hill with houses cascading down the slopes, almost like a staircase leading up to it. I can picture it now. What a sight that must be. It's quite something. And its location is significant, too. Dagkar Monastery is near a cave where, according to local lore, Milarepa spent time meditating, which makes it a popular pilgrimage site. The whole area is like a tapestry woven from history, spirituality, and unanswered questions. It sounds absolutely captivating. And it makes me wonder, with so much reliance on oral history, are we only scratching the surface of what we know about the Nishanpa and Manang? 
That's a question that researchers are constantly exploring, but what's clear is that Manang is more than just a picturesque destination. It's a living testament to the resilience of culture and the power of stories passed down through generations. It's incredible how these monasteries are like physical echoes of the past, each with its own story to tell. Speaking of stories, the Menang also mentions these vibrant festivals that take place in Menang. It feels like festivals are a great way to glimpse the heart and soul of a culture. Absolutely. Festivals offer a unique window into the values, beliefs, and traditions that bind a community together. And in Menang, two festivals in particular stand out. The Artong, also known as the Horse Festival, and the Mitha, the Archery Festival, both celebrated in Kungzar Village. Okay, those names alone sound pretty epic. Let's unpack these festivals. What makes them so special? Imagine this. It's the time of the Yertong, and all the men of Kangsar village are dressed in their finest attire, riding horses adorned with elaborate decorations. They set off on a procession towards Tasrab Monastery, singing traditional songs, their voices echoing through the mountains. It's a vibrant display of horsemanship, camaraderie, and deep spiritual devotion. Wow. I can just picture the scene, the colorful costumes, the sound of hooves pounding and the air buzzing with excitement. And what are the women and children doing during all of this? While the men are on their procession, the women and children are busy preparing a feast back in the village. They await the men's return, eager to hear stories of their journey and to celebrate together. It's a five day long affair filled with music, dancing and a palpable sense of community. It sounds like a joyous occasion, a true celebration of their heritage and traditions. And what about the Mitha, the archery festival? What makes that one unique? Archery holds a special place in many cultures, and for the Nishompa, it's a test of skill, precision, and focus. During the Mitha, archers from different villages gather to compete, their arrows soaring through the air against the backdrop of the Himalayas. But beyond the competition, it's a celebration of community, resilience, and the passing down of ancient skills. So these festivals are about more than just entertainment. They're a way for the Nishangpa to connect with their history, their spirituality, and with each other. Precisely. These celebrations offer a glimpse into the heart of their culture, revealing values of community, reverence for their ancestors, and deep gratitude for the blessings in their lives. It's amazing how these traditions have survived for generations, passed down from one to the next, keeping their history and spirit alive. And speaking of remarkable things that have stood the test of time, we have to talk about the lakes of Manang. The Manang mentions a couple, but they're not your average lakes, are they? You're right. These are no ordinary lakes. Okay. We're talking about high altitude, awe-inspiring bodies of water steeped in both natural beauty and cultural significance. Take Tilico Lake, for instance. Nestled high in the Annapurna Mazasif, it's considered one of the highest major lakes in the world, a site that draws in adventurers and pilgrims from far and wide. I've seen pictures and it's absolutely breathtaking. That striking blue water against the snow-capped peaks, it's like something out of a dream. But there's more to it than just its beauty, right? You mentioned cultural significance. Oh, absolutely. For starters, the name Tilicho itself might be derived from the Nishangpa dialect, Kang Taircho, meaning the lake near the mountain. Over time, this phrase might have been shortened and subtly mispronounced, eventually becoming Tilicho. That's a fascinating example of how language evolves and adapts over time, and it shows how intertwined the Nishangpa are with their natural surroundings. But you said Tilicho Lake holds significance for others beyond the Nishangpa. It does. Tilicho Lake isn't just a place of natural wonder for the Nishangpa. It also holds profound religious importance for both Buddhists and Hindus. In Hindu mythology, Tilicho is believed to be the sacred bathing place of Lord Shiva and his consort Parvati. Some even believe it could be the legendary Kakpasundi Lake mentioned in the epic Hindu poem, the Ramayana. Wow, that adds a whole other layer of meaning to this already extraordinary lake. So you've got this incredible blend of natural wonder, cultural significance, and spiritual reverence all converging in this one place. It's amazing. But we can't forget about Moon Lake. What can you tell us about this more mysterious lake? Moon Lake, as its name suggests, holds an air of mystique and wonder. Unlike Tilico, which is well-known and frequently visited, Moon Lake remains shrouded in local legends and whispers of ancient rituals. Imagine a lake so still and reflective that it mirrors the moon perfectly. 
a place where the veil between the physical and spiritual worlds seems to thin. It sounds almost otherworldly. What kind of legends and rituals are associated with Moon Lake? Local lore speaks of rain-making rituals performed on the shores of Moon Lake ceremonies designed to appease the gods and ensure a bountiful harvest. And there are whispers passed down through generations of auspicious symbols appearing in its waters, visions that are said to reveal hidden truths or foretell significant events. Those stories send shivers down my spine. They tap into that primal human fascination with the unknown the mysteries that lie just beyond our understanding. Exactly. And it's those mysteries, those unanswered questions, that make exploring a place like Manang so captivating. It's fascinating how these lakes reflect the soul of Manang, one well-known and revered, the other shrouded in mystery and whispered legends. It makes you wonder, though, what other secrets lie hidden within this breathtaking landscape and its culture. That's the beauty of a place like Minang. It invites exploration. It um, ignites our curiosity and reminds us that there's always more to discover. Remember, the absence of extensive written records doesn't mean the information doesn't exist. It could be hidden in plain sight, woven into the very fabric of Nishampa life, their cultural practices, the songs they sing, the stories they share. You're right. Earlier we were talking about those eulogy songs passed down through generations the ones sung in Tibetan, a language even the singers don't fully understand anymore. What if those songs hold clues to the Nishonka's past? Exactly. Those songs might hold pieces of their history, their beliefs, their migration patterns. Imagine if we could delve deeper into their lyrics, working alongside linguists and cultural experts to decipher their hidden meanings. It would be like piecing together a complex and beautiful puzzle. That's a fantastic idea. And what about those mysteries surrounding the monasteries? Can we apply that same thinking to those conflicting origin stories? Could there be other ways to uncover the truth, even without those lost inscriptions? There might be. Archaeology could hold some answers. Imagine unearthing a foundation stone or fragments of ancient texts during an excavation. Those discoveries could rewrite what we know about these sacred places. And, and let's not forget the power of oral history. While those stories might be embellished over time, they often hold kernels of truth threads we can follow to weave together a richer understanding of the past. It's like we're gathering clues to solve a historical mystery. And with so much left to discover, it makes you wonder, what else might be hidden within the heart of Manang, just waiting to be brought to light? That's the beauty of it all, isn't it? The journey of discovery is never truly over. So to you listening, remember this. The next time you encounter a place shrouded in mystery, a culture rich with untold stories, don't just observe, ask questions. Delve deeper. You never know what hidden wonders you might uncover. Beautifully said. This deep dive into the Manang district has been incredible. We've uncovered so much about this hidden paradise, from the enigmatic origins of the Nishangpa people to the mysteries surrounding those ancient monasteries. We've witnessed the vibrancy of their culture through their festivals, and we've glimpsed the profound connection they share with their natural world, a world of towering peaks, vibrant valleys, and serene lakes that reflect the very soul of this region. And through it all, we've only scratched the surface. Manaim reminds us that the most captivating journeys are often those that leave us with more questions than answers, inspiring us to keep exploring, keep learning, and keep embracing the wonder of the unknown. So if you ever find yourself wandering the trails of the Himalayas, remember the Nishangpa people and the hidden paradise they call home. Who knows what secrets you might uncover. Until next time, keep exploring and keep diving deep.